Have you ever wondered about the existence of a fabled land that vanished without a trace? Today we unravel the enigma of Lyoness, a legendary land steeped in mystery and folklore. Nestled off the coast of Cornwall, England, Lyoness is said to have been a prosperous kingdom, its existence now shrouded by the depth of the sea and the mists of time. This submerged realm has piqued the curiosity of historians, archaeologists and mystics alike, all intrigued by its sudden disappearance. Could an entire kingdom simply vanish? Or is there more to the tale of Lyoness than meets the eye? As we explore these questions, we'll navigate through the labyrinth of myths, legends, and historical accounts that surround this enigmatic land. From tales of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table to whispers of ancient magic and prophecy, Lyoness has left an indelible mark on the collective imagination. Join us on this journey as we delve into the chronicles of Lyoness. Every story has a beginning, and Lyoness is no exception. The tale of Lyoness first sprung to life in the medieval period, intertwined with the Arthurian legends that permeated the era. It was during this time that the narrative of this submerged kingdom was woven into the tapestry of British folklore. Lyoness was depicted as a land of unmatched wealth and beauty, a paradise lost beneath the waves. Its rolling hills were lush and verdant, the fields abundant with crops, and the trees heavy with ripe fruits. The air was said to be perpetually filled with the sweet scent of blossoming flowers, while the sounds of chirping birds and rushing streams provided a harmonious melody. The kingdom was described as being so vast that it encompassed over 140 churches, each one a testament to the prosperity that Lyoness enjoyed. The people of Lyoness were known for their joyous nature and their love of life. They reveled in the bounties that their land provided, and their laughter was as plentiful as the harvest. But Lyoness was not just any kingdom. Its significance in the Arthurian legends stems from its royal lineage. It was said to be the home of Tristan, one of King Arthur's trusted knights of the Round Table. Tristan, who was as famous for his valour in battle as he was for his tragic love story, was the nephew of King Mark of Cornwall, further cementing the link between Lyoness and the Arthurian tales. However, the most notable figure associated with Lyoness was none other than King Arthur himself. Arthur, the legendary King of Camelot, was said to have been born in this sunken kingdom, adding a layer of mystique and intrigue to its lore. Indeed, Lyoness was not just a land of prosperity and joy, it was also a land of heroes and legends. Its story is inextricably linked with the tales of King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table, making it an integral part of the rich tapestry of British mythology. As the tale goes, Lyoness wasn't just a land of prosperity, it was also home to a legendary king. King Arthur, a name synonymous with bravery and chivalry, has a deep-rooted connection with Lyoness. Let's delve deep into the annals of myth and history to explore this connection. Lyoness, this mystical land submerged in time and tide, was reputedly the birthplace of a knight of great distinction, a man whose name echoes through the ages, Sir Tristan. He was not just any knight, he was one of Arthur's most trusted, a stalwart presence at the legendary Round Table. The Round Table, as tales would have it, was a manifestation of equality and unity, a symbol of Arthur's vision for a just kingdom. And Lyoness, with its verdant landscapes and noble lineage, was the perfect backdrop for such a vision. It was here that Sir Tristan learned the values of chivalry, loyalty and courage, values that he carried with him to Arthur's court. Stories tell us that the Round Table was not just a table, but a meeting point of hearts and minds where knights would gather, their voices resonating in the halls of Camelot. And Sir Tristan, with his roots firmly planted in the soil of Lyoness, brought with him the spirit of this lost land. He was not just a representative of Lyoness, but also its embodiment, his deeds of bravery, his tales of love and loss all mirrored the saga of his homeland. A saga that was in many ways intertwined with the Arthurian legend. Lyoness was not just a geographical entity, but a character in itself playing a vital role in the narrative of King Arthur and his knights. This legendary land, even though it lies submerged, continues to live in these tales in the memory of a brave knight and in the hearts of those who still whisper the name Lyoness. So Lyoness was more than a kingdom, it was an integral part of Arthurian folklore. 
a land lost to the sea yet preserved in the annals of legend and myth, forever linked with the name of King Arthur, the Round Table, and the brave knight, Sir Tristan. But no story is complete without a dramatic climax, and Leonessa's was truly tragic. This legendary land, steeped in Arthurian lore, met a cataclysmic end that has fascinated historians and storytellers for centuries. According to the legend, Leoness was swallowed by the sea in a single day and night. The sun rose on a thriving kingdom, alive with the hustle and bustle of daily life, only to set on a watery grave. A vibrant realm, once teeming with chivalrous knights and fair maidens, was reduced to a silent expanse of sea. Theories abound as to how such a sudden and devastating event could have occurred. Some believe it was a tsunami, a monstrous wave triggered by an undersea earthquake that sealed Leoness's fate. Others suggest that the kingdom was victim to a rapid sea level rise, potentially due to melting glaciers. Then there are the myths. Some tales suggest the submergence was a divine punishment, a consequence of the people's wickedness and moral decay. Others spin a more fantastical story of powerful sorcerers and their destructive spells echoing the mystical elements of Arthurian tales. The most chilling account, perhaps, is that of the sole survivor, a man named Trevilian. As the legend goes, he rode a white horse ahead of the encroaching waters, escaping just in time to witness his homeland's demise from a safe distance. His horse, it is said, left hoofprints in the rocks as they fled, marks that can be seen to this day as a stark reminder of Leoness's tragic end. Despite the many theories and myths, the truth about Leoness's submergence remains shrouded in mystery. Archaeologists and historians have yet to find concrete evidence of this lost kingdom, and its exact location, if it ever truly existed, is still unknown. And, just like that, Leoness was lost to the depths, leaving behind a mystery that has endured for centuries. This tale of a kingdom swallowed by the sea, whether fact or fiction, continues to captivate the imagination a haunting echo of a time long past. In the realm of British folklore, few tales are as captivating as that of Leoness. Leoness, a land of enchantment and mystery, holds a special place in the heart of British folklore. This legendary sunken kingdom, believed to have once thrived off the coast of Cornwall, pulses with tales of grandeur and tragedy, of chivalry and betrayal. Its essence is woven into the fabric of British culture and has been so for centuries. As the supposed home of Tristan, a knight of King Arthur's Round Table, the legend of Leoness is closely intertwined with the Arthurian saga. Its rich narrative has been a wellspring of inspiration for countless works of literature, from the medieval romance Tristan and Isolde, to Alfred Lord Tennyson's Idols of the King. This enduring allure transcends the written word, with Leoness making its mark on works of art and even contemporary pop culture. The allure of Leoness is not limited to its ties with King Arthur and his knights. Its tragic end, the dramatic submergence beneath the waves, has inspired countless ballads and poems. The haunting image of a once majestic kingdom consumed by the sea resonates deeply with our collective consciousness, a poignant reminder of the fleeting nature of all things. In Cornwall, the legend of Leoness is more than just a tale, it's a part of their heritage, a thread that links the present to a distant mythical past. The Cornish people have kept the legend alive, recounting the story to each new generation. Tales of fishermen catching ancient buildings in their nets or hearing the submerged church bells ring during stormy weather continue to fuel the intrigue and fascination surrounding Leoness. The legend of Leoness has seeped into the collective British identity, shaping cultural expressions and firing the imagination for centuries. Its story, though rooted in the mists of time, remains remarkably fresh and captivating, a testament to its enduring appeal. The legend of Leoness, a tale of beauty, bravery and tragedy, continues to be a source of fascination and wonder. And so what do you think? Does Leonessa live on? beneath the waves, waiting to be discovered. Just like other captivating mysteries, the story of this legendary land challenges us to question, to explore, and to imagine. It urges us to dive into the depths of history, to sift through the sands of time, and to navigate the vast ocean of folklore. Leoness, with its tales of King Arthur and the Round Table, beckons us to delve into a world where fact intertwines with fiction, where reality blurs with mythology. It is an invitation to ponder over the possibilities that lie beneath the surface, 
to uncover truths hidden beneath layers of legend and lore. The mystery of Leoness, like many other legends, reminds us of the power of stories, the allure of the unknown and the thrill of discovery. Whether it exists or not, the legend of Leoness will forever be a part of our shared folklore, a testament to our enduring fascination with the unknown.